Greetings everyone. We will continue our session on object oriented programming through C++. In the previous session we have looked about and we have started the key concepts of object oriented programming. In this particular session we will continue about the key concepts of object oriented programming. So in the previous session we have looked about what are objects, classes, methods, data abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance. So in this particular session we will be looking at the remaining five or uh, six particular key concepts of object oriented programming. So in the previous session specifically I told you what is a data abstraction. Data abstraction is mainly about concealing your implementation details or unnecessary details to the user and only showing what are the necessary details for easy operation of for the user that is data abstraction. You are hiding unnecessary data and showing only the necessary data. You are hiding the implementation details and you are showing only the operational details. That is about data abstraction as I told you in the previous session. And I told you about the encapsulation that is keeping both your data and methods inside the classes will be calling it as encapsulation where you are hiding your particular data inside the class so that other objects cannot access that particular data. So we will be having private and public data. So public data can be accessed by other objects but private data can be accessed by only those particular objects only. Okay. So that is about encapsulation. This particular encapsulation and data abstractions provide data hiding or data security in object oriented program. And I also told you about the inheritance where you will be providing reusability of existing objects where you will be having parent objects and child objects. The parent objects data will be present and the child objects try to extend the particular properties of the parent object. Okay. So we will be having already the existing objects. The new objects that are child objects can use the properties and methods of your parent object. That will be calling it as inheritance where the child object will be inheriting some certain properties from the parent class. Okay. So this thing will be providing you reusability in your particular object oriented program. And so we have started briefly about the polymorphism. So polymorphism it is about the ability to take more than one forms. And as I told you polymorphism makes the code more readable. And in this feature which will help us to create multiple functions with the same name but with the different arguments. As an example I told you yesterday about how to provide a square to a number where you can have something like this int square of an int that is we will be trying to square an integer float square of float ok where the same function names that is different functions having the same name we will be calling it as function overloading. So this function overloading mainly helps to implement the polymorphism that is a particular thing taking more than one forms we will be calling it as polymorphism. So this particular thing where your arguments are different that is the function name is same but the arguments are different that is in the particular thing we are having int as the argument in the second one we are having float as the argument but the function name is same. So function overloading is mainly about having same name to the function but with different arguments. So such functions will be calling it as function overloading. That function overloading concept implements your polymorphism. So polymorphism is mainly about taking more than one form. So the particular square function is taking more than one form here. So in the similar sense we are having other options to implement the polymorphism also. So as I told you in the previous one. So this is another way to implement your uh, particular function overloading. So we are having draw method. So this particular draw method is implemented for multiple ways that is to it is implemented for circuit, it is implemented for rectangle, it is implemented for square. Okay. The same draw method could be used for multiple ways that is the draw function could be used to implement for circle. So whenever you are implementing for circle, you can be having only one argument here. That is in order to implement your circle, you will be needing only the radius. Okay. But when you want to implement the rectangle, you need the length and breadth. Okay. When you want to implement the square, you need the side. Okay. So, but 
this three values that is here we can be having the integer as the argument here we can we need to have two arguments int comma int okay and the square side is another argument okay you can be implementing by using double or another arguments okay so whatever the particular function you have that is a draw function or a draw method draw method could be implemented in three ways but with different arguments okay such implementation we will be calling it as function overloading that function overloading part implements your polymorphism where the draw method is taking more than one forms okay so a particular thing taking more than one form will be calling it as polymorphism next so function overloading and another type that is operator overloading are the examples of implementation of your polymorphism apart from the function overloading we can use the we can use to implement the polymorphism by using operator overloading so this particular operator overloading i will give with an example for the time being using a single function name to perform different types of tasks is known as function overloading that is you are going to take only one function name but you are performing multiple tasks there so in the previous example you are using the draw method to perform the task of drawing a circle drawing a rectangle drawing a particular square so you are using the same method to perform different types of tasks in the further previous example i told you you are using the square method to perform a square of a normal integer number you are using the square to perform a square of a double number or a float number okay so you are using the same name to perform different tasks such thing will be calling it as function overloading which implements your polymorphism another thing is the process of making an operator to exhibit different behaviors in different instances will be calling it as operator overloading operator overloading is mainly about you are using one operator to perform multiple operations already you have seen this particular thing in c language where you will be using one operator to perform more than one operations in different instances okay so i think you can see where you are going to use this particular thing so in c language you are having various operators where you will be implementing the operator overloading indirectly but not specifically for example if you are taking the plus sign okay the plus sign basically implements addition okay so this will implement addition only when you are using with two operands that is when you are using with two operands it will implement addition operation but if you are using with a single operand it will implement positive sign okay it will implement swap positive sign same is the case with minus so whenever you are using it with a multiple operands that is two operands it will be implementing subtraction but when you use with a single operand it will be implementing the negative minus sign in the similar manner we are having many other particular operands sorry operators which you can overload that is in a particular instance you can make it to implement something in another instance you can make it to implement other things okay so we are having other particular operators so not only this in particular c++ language you can be having or you can implement any operator to perform different types of operations that is you can use another subtraction operator to overload it as addition operator so there are possibilities where you can implement more than one operation with a particular operand okay with a particular operator this thing where you are implementing or using one operator to perform multiple operations we will be calling it as operator overloading so another example where you are using the operator overloading in c language is i think you have seen the particular star operator that is where you are using in say c language star operator so whenever you are using the star operator in between two operands okay whenever you are using star operator in between two operands we are implementing the multiplication operation and in the same manner whenever you use it in a declaration in star a okay whenever you use it in a declaration we are declaring it as a pointer so this particular star is acting as a multiplication operator here it is acting as a pointer operator in this particular instance in the same thing if you use this particular thing to implement something like this particular percentage d star a 
okay in this particular instance in pointers this will be implementing it as in direction operator okay in direction operator so the same star is applied in different instances with different okay parameters so when it is used in between two operands it will be performing multiplication operation when it is used in declaration part of a pointer it will act as a pointer operator when you are using it separately to print something okay it will be acting as a in direction operator okay so this is what we can think it as operator overloading where one operator that is star operator is acting as a different or it is performing different tasks at different instances this particular thing which you are using in c language without much okay idea can be implemented by the programmer in c++ or in object oriented programming this part where a particular operator is taking more than one forms at different instances we will be calling it as operator overloading okay so the polymorphism is basically implemented by using two things one is your function overloading where you are using one function name to implement multiple operations and operator overloading where you are using one operator to implement more than one operations okay this is polymorphism the next operation you are going to see is dynamic binding okay so dynamic binding refers to linking of your procedure call linking your procedure or function call to the code to be executed in response to the call okay i think you can remember your functions so where you are writing main inside the main you will be writing function calls okay so after the main you will be writing your function definition okay if you remember your functions topic in c language you will be writing main inside the main will be writing the function call whenever this function call is encountered the control will transfer from this place to this place and whatever the code you write inside the function that particular function will be executed all those steps that those are present in the particular function will be executed this is how general a function call will be executed okay so binding refers to basically the linking part that is how this particular thing is linked to this particular function definition that is whenever a particular function call is made to the code that code has to be connected to the particular call that is when the call is made that code has to be connected to that particular call this thing will be calling it as binding okay that is first part that is binding the second part is okay this binding parts could be done in two ways one will be calling it as static another one will be calling it as dynamic so there are two types of binding one is static binding another one is dynamic binding so static binding is usually done at compile time so whenever you are performing the compilation part will be doing this particular compilation so this thing which you have learned in c language that is how this particular function call makes the control to jump from this place to this place this will be usually done during the compilation part so that is what in c language the compilation will be done in that manner and the linking or binding will happen during the compilation time so that is why c language will use the static binding okay i think you can understand what is static binding this linking of your function call to the function definition code will be calling it as binding this binding part which occurs during the compilation will be calling it as static binding this static binding is usually performed in your c language so and when you come to the dynamic binding so dynamic binding is usually done at run time or execution time during the execution time of your particular c++ program we will be performing the dynamic binding so dynamic binding will usually occur in c++ during the execution okay so dynamic binding means that code associated with your given procedure call is not known or not executed until the time of the call at run time okay whatever this particular thing that the connection between function call to the function code 
this thing will not be known until the execution of your particular program okay during the compilation phase it will not be doing this thing only during the execution phase it will be doing this thing why okay it is associated with polymorphism as i told you in the previous particular slides what is polymorphism so polymorphism is basically if you are having function if you are having function overloading if there is one function with function of int that is square of int you can take it as if there is another function function of float now if you see these two functions are different functions okay to make it more simple for you i will take it as a square only so i will take square of int and another function square of float so in the c++ program we are writing two functions is one is square of int another one is square of float now if you make a function call that is in the main if you are writing square of five if i am writing square of five in c language there will not be two functions with the same name that is in c language there will be only one square function and there will be only one definition that for that particular square but in c++ as i told you in function overloading we can be having more than one function with the same name but different arguments that we will be calling it as polymorphism or function overloading so when i perform a function call with phi value okay the particular thing doesn't know whether it has to go to this particular square or this particular square okay so this decision of whether to execute square of int or square of float will not be happening during the compilation time it will be only happening during the run time that is by deciding what is the particular data type of that particular value phi what is the value that is phi is a integer if you are treating this particular if you are having a particular variable a okay so first they how to look at where, what is the particular declaration or what is the particular uh, data type of way based upon that only it will be linking this particular function call to the particular value or particular function code okay this process is usually done during the run time only so this process will be calling it as dynamic binding so this thing will happen dynamically during the execution time so this is associated is with polymorphism as well as inheritance so in inheritance also it will be used you will be knowing a particular thing later while you are understanding the inheritance okay a function call associated with the polymorphic reference okay depends on the dynamic type of that particular reference as i told you so one hour you call a particular thing it will be dynamically associated with your particular function code so this particular thing will be calling it as dynamic binding so as i told you will be having two types of binding one is static binding another one is dynamic binding static binding is used in c language where the particular binding happens only during the compilation time and dynamic binding is used in object oriented programming that will be in c++ okay this thing will be done during the execution time so basically binding is connecting your function call to the function definition code okay that will be calling it as binding so the next thing so this is an example of dynamic binding so as i told you you are having two functions the first function is a sum with two parameters the second function is sum with three parameters that will be calling it as the function overloading or your polymorphism so for you will be writing the function code for the both that is you are having function code for two parameters you are having function code for three parameters so when this particular function call happens that is sum of 20 comma 30 okay during the compilation time it cannot decide whether it has to go to this one or this one only during the execution time the function call decides that it is implementing two parameter function so the particular control will jump from this place to this place okay so whatever the code that is present it will execute after that the result will go back here okay if there is a three parameter function 
then the code will jump from this place to this place. So that thing will happen during the runtime. This is what we will be calling it as dynamic binding. If you are writing another function, sum of 4, 5, 3, okay, by default it will take a 3 parameter function and it will execute this particular function. Okay, so these things will happen during the runtime. That is why we'll be calling it as dynamic binding. This dynamic binding only will come into picture whenever you are implementing the function overloading and uh, inheritance. Okay. The next particular OOPS concept is your message passing. So object-oriented program consists of a set of objects that communicate with each other. So I gave you examples during your discussion on objects where one object will be interacting with another object. Not only that, we will be having more than one object. Okay. So I gave you example about library and information system or your library information system where you will be having library, we will be having books, we will be having students. Okay. So we can be having one librarian object, we can be having more than one book objects okay not only one you can be having more than one book objects you can be having more than one student objects okay so we'll be having usually one librarian object so we'll be having a set of objects in your system these objects will communicate with one another based upon the processes the process of programming in an object oriented programming language involves the following steps first one Creating your classes as I told you if I want to create the object first I have to create the classes Okay, after that you have to create objects from those classes Establish communication between these objects now after creating your objects that is first you have to create the classes Then you have to create the objects after that you have to establish the communication between the objects Okay, so basically student has to interact with your particular librarian for requesting the books and the librarian has to interact with the books that is he has to remove some books from the librarian system and he has to add new books to the system so it has to in the, he has to interact with the books and the books are issued to the particular student s1 okay so all these processes whatever it are happening this will happen through messages okay the student one has to message the librarian that is I need a particular book. Okay, the librarian has to give some message that I am adding or I am deleting one book. So one of the book has to be given or to a particular student. All these things usually happen through messages. You will be better understanding how these messages will be passed in the later particular sessions. For the time being know that First you have to create the classes, next you have to create your objects, after that you have to establish the communications between the multiple objects. That is the particular thing. So objects communicate with one another by sending and receiving information much the same way as people pass messages to one another. Okay. So it is a basic thing. Message passing involves specifying the name of the object, the name of the function and the information to be sent okay as i told you so when the student want to interact with the librarian so he has to send to whom it, he has to send the particular message to the librarian and he has to send some mess function that is what he has to perform that is what the particular object has to perform he will be giving the particular function so like this the communication will happen between the multiple objects okay so this is a particular thing about message passing so this message passing will be used in this manner. So this is an object of the student. In the object of student we are having one particular method as pay fees is one method. So pay fees has to interact with the fee receipt object. Okay. Pay fees has to interact with the fee receipt object. So object com communicate through this particular function. So this student object will interact with the fee receipt object through this pay fees function okay so basically you are going to use the methods present in one function to communicate with objects in another sorry to communicate with other objects 
okay so one object will interact with the other object through messages by using the functions okay so this thing will learn as you look at the programming part in depth for the time being know that objects will be interacting with one another through messages so in this session we have looked at polymorphism message passing and dynamic binding in the previous sessions we have looked about data abstraction encapsulation and inheritance in the next sessions we will be looking at the other three particular concepts of object oriented programming and we will wrap up this session and continue with this particular remaining object oriented concepts in the next session thank you